Hey there guys, uh, I know that something that a lot of people get hung up about and have difficulty sort of getting their head around to be able to get uh, a better understanding of how the park baseball works is how the actual game engine works. I'm not talking about the trade engine, I'm talking about how the game actually simulates the results of at bats, plate appearances, etc. So that's what we are going to be covering today. So I'm just going to say... I will be saying everything like it is proven completely true, and that's not the case. Probably about 85% confident in most of what I'm saying here today, uh, particularly the stuff at the beginning I'm pretty confident in, but it's not proven. It's just the most up-to-date theories that I've got for you guys, and if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me. If you've got data that disproves something I have, definitely send it to me, and I'll take a look. Um, and yeah, so we're going to hop right into it now. And the first thing is at its core, OTP is a system of ratings checks. Okay. So it has nothing to do with hidden data. It's not like there are skills based on ratings or anything like that. It is completely based on the ratings that you see on a player and some that you don't, um, so in general, higher ratings increase the odds of success for what they directly influence. So for example, batter power increases the likelihood that the batter hits a home run. Pitcher stuff increases the opportunity for them to strike out a batter. Um, fielder range increases the likelihood that they will prevent a hit on a ball in play. And yeah, things like that. So order of operations determines the result of an at-bat. I don't think you will find anybody who argues that order of operations does not exist in some form. Um, I know that the more conservative people have it listed just as the three true outcomes, all calculated at once, and then batted balls, all calculated at once. Uh, I'm a little bit more aggressive on that. I am almost certain that walks are calculated first. I've got strikeouts and home runs calculated at the same time. I have doubles and triples calculated before singles. But I'm a little bit looser on that. I can see you arguing that all batted ball data is calculated at the same time pretty easily. So uh, either way, the general order of operations is first, it determines if there's a walk. Then it determines if there is a strikeout or a home run. Then it determines if there is a double or a triple. And if none of those things happen, it determines if there is a single. And if there is not a single, then it is a batted ball out. So... Uh, keep that in mind, that is very important. Now, if the result of one thing is not calculated in the order, it moves on to the next set of calculations. So, for example, it'll be if there is a walk, then there's a walk. If not, then it'll move on to checking strikeouts, home runs. If there's no strikeout or home run, then it moves on to checking if there's a double or a triple. If there's not a double or a triple, then it moves on to checking if there is a single. If there's not a single, then it's an out uh, on a batted ball. So, uh, while there are generally other external modifiers, and I talk about them in some of my other videos, you could think of most of the checks as the following, because these things have the largest impact on the result of play appearance. So, walks are pitcher control plus catcher ability, which is very important because catcher ability does largely impact um, how likely a pitcher is to walk a batter against batter eye. Strikeouts are pitcher stuff plus catcher ability. Again, catcher building, very important in this, against batter void Ks. Home runs are pitcher movement against batter power. And doubles and triples are just batter gap power. To my knowledge, there is nothing else that really heavily influences the likelihood that a double or triple happens. If there is, if you get to that point in the order of operations, it's just, it's either batter gap power gets you to a double or triple, or it's a on to the next move in the order of operations. And then... If Whether it's a single or a batted ball out at this point in the order of operations is determined by a combination of field range and second base, third base, and shortstop arm. And it's very important to note that it is specifically second base, third base, and shortstop arm against batter BABIP. Now, uh, I'm just going to say that the arm is to slightly lessen the opportunity for infield singles. And that's why I believe it is involved because you will see uh, a greater number of outs converted, particularly with higher third base arm, uh, notably with shortstop arm and to some extent with second base arm. 
Now, before the order of operations are calculated, pre at bat results are calculated. So these are things that happen before the order of op the natural at bat order of operations or plate appearance order of operations. Um, but obviously, that's the most important thing in the entire check system. But there is still more to go. So before the plate appearance, it checks to see if there's a balk. Then it checks to see if there's a wild pitch or a passed ball. Then it checks to see if there's a hit by pitch, if there is a bunt, or if there is a stolen base. So you can uh, think of them as the following checks. Box are the pitcher balk rating. Just that's the only thing getting checked. That's only visible to the editor, so you won't be able to see at all on the player. You're just gonna have to kind of like look at their past data and uh, see if a pitcher is balking to determine if they do have a higher balk rating. Wild pitch slash pass ball. That's pitcher wild pitch, which is another hidden rating only visible in the editor against batter hit by, or that's uh, against catcher ability rather with catcher ability. So catchers try to prevent pass balls and wild pitches. Pitchers can sometimes cause them. And again, a mishap on the catcher side of things can cause a pass ball as well. So a hit by pitch is the pitcher hit by pitch rating, which is only visible in the editor plus catcher. Uh, that, uh, so it's a pitcher hit by pitch rating, which is only visible in the editor against the batter hit by pitch rating, which is also only visible in the editor. But once again, you can look at a player's past statistics and you can see if they're hitting a lot of batters or if they're getting hit by a lot of pitches and try to determine um, if that player has a higher rating in that area. Bunting is, uh, it seems like it's calculated kind of like your normal plate appearance. But with modifiers where the ball is more likely to be put in play, less likely to be taken. And, um, yeah, pretty much just that. The likelihood of a bunt occur, or the bunt being successful is based more on the um, batter bunt ratings, which are bunt for hit and sacrifice bunt. And then, of course, your fielders. And stolen bases slash caught ceiling. It's very tough to say where that actually is in the calculations order. Uh, That's kind of true of bunting as well. They're both really weird because the result of the at-bat is calculated before they happen, up until the point of the pitch count total, but they still change the results of the plate appearance. So if you have somebody try to bunt, then that can create a different outcome than what would have happened or what was calculated before you tried to bunt. And same thing with stealing. If you got a batter on base and they steal base, then the result of the at-bat will be different. Um, so anyways, aside from that, stealing is pitcher hold runners plus catcher arm against batter stealing rating. Only the stealing rating. Speed just determines if they go. Stealing is the only thing that matters for success rate. Uh, I do believe there is a speed modifier, but stealing is really what you're looking at. And there are also a series of checks that happen after plate appearances happen. So, uh, ball is in play, or um, a batter has struck out, whatever. We have this. So, it's first checking to see what the pitch count is. So, the ball is, let's say, it's a batted ball out. So, how many pitches do we have to get there? Well, you can have like two balls and two strikes before the ball is put in play. You can have two balls and two strikes with several foul balls, etc. But um, that's calculated actually after the plate appearance happens. So that seems to mostly be derived from pitcher control and batter eye. But it's difficult to say for sure what goes into that. Uh, it's a combination of many things for sure. It's probably one of the more complicated calculations in the game. Anyways, uh, batted ball location. So that's some combination of the batter's batted ball profile, their spray profile, the pitcher's ground ball percentage, maybe their movement. It's kind of hard to say for that as well, but basically it calculates. Um, I'm sure you've seen the charts that have certain data locations for where batted balls are, like uh, naming certain regions. That's what's calculated here. Then it's calculated if there is, so if there's a strikeout, it calculates if there is um, a pass or a drop ball three and if the batter reaches base. Um, and if it's a batted ball in play and an out, 
it makes this check for the fielder that it is batted or that is making the play rather. So uh, each ball, batted ball is assigned a fielding difficulty rating. So it's how tough it is for that fielder to make the play on the ball. It is that against their fielding error rating specifically. So uh, if it's really far, if it's calculated to be really far away from, let's say, the shortstop, and the shortstop's making the play, but they've got an outstanding error rating, it'll still be a it's a difficult play to make, but their error rating will make it easier for them to make that play more often. And lastly, extra base attempts are calculated. So let's say you've got a runner on first base, there's a single down the right field line, the right fielder gets to it. Uh, the ball is shallow, but the runner is rounding second and heading for third. So you decide to send them. And uh, it's then that runner's base running rating against the right fielder's arm. It seems to be exclusively arm against base running. I don't see anything else involved into these calculations. Well, and uh, depth slash distance. So, like, if that wall were in left field, or, ugh, excuse me, uh, very shallow rather than just shallow, um, then it might be a lower success rate, etc. And, of course, errors are once again calculated here. Is the guy going to make a throwing error? Is there going to be a catching error from the third baseman when the ball gets them, etc.? So, yeah. And that's just about it for the game engine. If you guys have any questions about this, be sure to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to discuss it. Um, if you disagree with something in there, definitely reach out to me because, again, this is hardly set in stone stuff. This is just what I believe, based on the data I've collected and seen, to be the most likely to be correct thing. So I'll see you guys on the next video.